G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Hi there, my name is Paul Coney. Today I'm going to do a demonstration of a watercolour painting using a transparent technique. The scene I've taken from a place called Auckland in New Zealand and it's a scene of blackback gulls on a beach called Mission Bay. Now this is the scene I've sketched out already on Saunders Waterford paper. I've sketched it out in pencil and it's of blackback gulls in the shallows at Mission Bay. Um, you, you'll notice I'm using three, three gulls as key elements and there'll be reflections and there'll be little waves with sparkles on coming in in the background. As you can see with the sketch I tend to sketch in geometric shapes or straight lines because I believe this gives stronger shape to the finished painting. You'll also see that I've placed the key elements or the gulls at or near intersections of the thirds in the composition. And I think this will help lead, lead your eye from the foreground through to the gull in the background and then out through the waves. This is a reference photo of part of the scene that I'm going to be painting. In it you'll be able to see the light and the shadow on the gull, the sparkles on the waves, and the colours and tones that I'm going to be using and I'll have to portray. Now because we're painting a transparent watercolour we have to, in our approach, we have to pretty much um, preconceive how we're going to do the painting right from the beginning because we want it to have a representational look. This means that all our lights and semi-lights we have to leave out. We can't paint them in opaquely afterwards. So we have to plan where they are, which is why I've sketch, sketched out the gulls. Now the first thing that I think we want to keep light are the sparkles on the waves. They're going to be the lightest part of the whole painting. Now in order to do this, we have to mask them out using art masking fluid. This is sometimes called miskit or frisket sometimes. And what we do is we paint it on to areas that we want to mask out that the, so the paint can't get at those areas. We let that dry and once it dries that area is protected from any paint that we put over. Now because sparkles in the sea are a direct reflection of the sun pretty much. You can't go lighter than that and it's, it's quite hard to depict that brightness in a painting. We can't go brighter than white so we have to think of another way to do it. And the other way we do it is not by going brighter than white but we take the rest of the painting down about a quarter or a half a tone. So what I'm going to do first is apply the masking fluid to where I want the brightest whites in the painting. Okay, now, now with the masking fluid, it smells very, very strongly of ammonia. And you'll find that the more it smells, um, the, the, the better condition it's in. It does go off after a while, but if it's still got a smell, it'll probably work okay. Now what I've also done is got some warm water and some dishwashing liquid which I put the brush in first. Masking fluid does wreck your brushes so this will keep them a little bit longer by putting them in warm water and, and dishwashing liquid and it helps the masking fluid come off the brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint in some of the sparkles 
on the paper. And all you do is basically do the shapes that you see or the shapes that you want the highlights to be in. And I can see them all over the top of the wave here, little pinpricks of light. And coming down a bit. Also with the with these waves you'll see there are reflections of the sparkles underneath. Now I think that's quite important to have those in as well because it gives the water a reflective quality if you see those. So I just keep putting the masking on this wave where I want those tiny little sparkles to be and here and there underneath to show the reflection of the sparkles. And these little points I'm putting in now that I'm masking out will be the lightest part of the whole painting. When these are dry we're going to put a wash, a very a light wash right over the whole rest of the painting and that will ensure that these sparkles are the brightest thing in the whole painting. When you're putting the masking fluid on, don't try and put it on thinly, put it on as thickly as you can because that ensures no paint will go through it. The other thing to keep a watch for is sometimes they're left just little pinpricks of holes in the masking fluid and if you don't fill those in paint will get through those as well. So make sure it's on very thickly. That also makes it easier to get off if it's on thickly. When you've applied the masking fluid to all the little sparkles that you want, you need it to dry. If you want to speed up the drying a little bit, you can gently, gently blow it dry with just a warm blow dryer. But you mustn't heat it too much or else sometimes it fuses to the paper. As well, you, you have to be careful if you leave it for a week or two and where you prop it is in full sun, because if it's in full sun and heats up, that also causes it to fuse to the paper sometimes. But if you just warmly blow it dry and gently with a blow dry, it should be fine. Okay, now the masking fluid is pretty much dry now, I think. So we can be assured that that's going to keep the paint away from those little areas we don't want to get into. So the next thing I want to think about now is colour. Um, when I'm sorting out my palette or which colours I'm going to use, I normally work um, to a limited palette. If I look at these reference photos I've got, I can see that I'm going to probably need a cobalt blue. I can see that I'm going to need an umber, probably a burnt umber, and a yellow ochre, and possibly a burnt sienna. Now I think that's pretty much all, pretty much the only colours I'm going to need for this painting. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a very, very pale wash of grey, but a very, very pale wash. And I'm going to wash that right over the whole painting. And that will ensure that those tones we've masked out, they will definitely be the brightest tones in the whole painting. And at the end of the painting, they should really sparkle compared to everything else. Now I've got the cobalt blue put out on the palette and the burnt umber put out on the palette. I'm going to mix the two into quite a lot of water and make a pale grey. That's the blue first, and a bit of umber. We'll make, we'll make a grey that perhaps tends towards blue a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, that will pretty much do, I think, for the grey. I'll just test it on a bit of watercolour paper so I can see the exact colour that it is. That's okay. Now, the only thing we have to um, think about is I'm going to put water on the paper first and I'm going to drop this into the water. So that will probably dilute by half again. So I'm going to make it a little bit stronger because it's going wet and wet onto the paper. Okay, okay I'm going to put clear water all over the whole painting. Right over everything. The masking fluid should be dry now and impervious to the water. I'll just make sure the whole paper is wet. Okay, now I'll get a largish brush, put it in the grey. I might actually just tilt the painting slightly. I'll just wash this over. So as you can see, it, it is very, very pale. But it'll just take everything else down a notch or two. So right over the seagulls, we're not worrying about them at the moment. And you'll probably say, well, won't the seagulls look grey? But when all the other darker tones in, you won't even notice that the seagulls are slightly grey. There, now the beauty of doing this as well is you can just tilt the whole painting slightly. Like this. Just make it sure it evenly distributes itself. Okay, that's fine. And now we just leave it for a little while to sink in a bit more and then I'll dry it um, with the hairdryer again just to speed up the process. Okay, now the next thing I think, think of, the grey is, the light grey is dry is what else, what other really light tonal values or spaces do I have to protect on the painting? And the answer of course is these gulls have um, light plumage. So what I'm going to do, there's the choice, I can either paint around the gulls and put in the, a slightly darker background or I can mask the gulls out as well. So the, the option I'm going for is I'm going to mask the golds out as well because <clears throat> I want some freedom when I'm painting the water. Um, it has some horizontal sweeps going through and I don't want to have to be careful going around the golds. And that will give me the freedom just to paint right through the golds. As you can see, some of the pencil lines are, are reasonably dark. I've done that on purpose because when I mask out the gulls, the masking fluid when I pull it off is also going to pull some lead away from the paper and I'll be left with the fainter looking um, lead lines. Okay, I go over, right over all the gull. Right over the pencil lines, right over everything. And again, make sure it goes on thickly. Now that um, the gulls are totally masked out and they're dry, I'm going to start the actual painting. As you can see with watercolours, there's quite a lot of preparation that you have to do before you actually get around to painting anything. Firstly, I'm going to concentrate on painting these little wavelets and ripples here 
above the main wave, which is going to be this area up here. These, of course, will continue right down through, but I'll start with up here first. Again, I'm going to mix up the bluey-grey colour that these little waves are out of cobalt blue and burnt umber. I'll make it slightly more blue this time. And also, I'm going to do this wet and wet. With, I'm going to start off wet and wet with a very small brush. So because it's wet and wet, there are two variables we have to take into account. The wetness of the paper and the thickness of the pigment. So this pigment here, I'm making a little bit thicker than I did that first grey wash that we did. So that when I do it wet and wet, it'll stay there. Then I'll gradually work up to it being a little bit wet on dry as the paper dries. Okay, now I'm going to wet the paper just above where the, this main sort of wave is. Now with wet and wet, it's a good idea to wet it very, very thoroughly to absolutely saturate it in actual fact. And then you've actually got a longer working time if it's very, very wet. So I wet it very thoroughly. I'll probably take it down into this main wave a little bit, as you can see. And then I just let it soak in for a while. And I, you have to time it so that the, the wetness of the paper is going to achieve the effect you want when you do the brushwork. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a test and just see how wet it actually is. So that's not too bad to start off with. So I'm just softly going to put these little wavelets in. Now with waves, I don't want to be regular with the actual shapes and with the gaps between the shapes. So I'm being as irregular as I can with it. As human beings, I think we have a tendency to try and make everything regular and balanced. And that isn't always how it works in, in nature with things like waves. So I'm varying the size. I'm varying the shape of them a little bit. Occasionally we'll have a large one like that. And then little smaller ones. Some will join to other ones. You see we're getting quite a nice soft effect already. And just fade it out a little bit as we get to the top. Okay, then I'm going to work over this side more. Okay, I think I've pretty much done enough now. I've implemented a sort of a, a textural perspective as well. Um, as, as you get further into the distance from the foreground, I think in general things get softer. So I'm going to leave these little wave, waves in a, in a fairly soft texture so they recede into the background. Okay, now I'm going to gently dry it. I don't want the blow dryer on full because I don't want to blow the paint all over the place. So just very gently on a warm setting. Okay, now that top bit's dry and I'm going to move on to this main wave coming through. Um, as you can probably see, some yellow is being introduced into the, the palette there. So I'm going to use the first two colours again, a cobalt blue and a bit of um, burnt umber to get a greyed blue that and then I'm going to introduce some yellow ochre. As you can see yellow ochre is quite a strong colour. 
will totally dominate everything if you put too much of it in. So I'm going to have a slight, it'll make a greeny colour. So that's a slightly darker greeny colour. And I'm also going to make a more yellow one as well. Okay, so that's a little, that's lighter. And you can see the yellow is more evident in that one. Again, I can feel the pigments in the mixture, so it's not just water, you can actually feel a little bit of solidity there, which is important, because again, I'm going to start, start wet and wet, and I'm going to put the underpainting in the wave and bring it down through this section here. I'm going to start with doing the underpainting in this wave and I'm going to bring the the greens with the ochre in plus some of the blues that we used up here right down sort of into this section here. So that will be this section here in the painting. Okay now I'm going to wet the whole area of this wave in this section. Now because the gull's masked I don't need to worry about it at all I just put water straight through it and the same when I'm painting I'll just paint straight through that gull and the shape and tonal value the lighter tonal value of it is already protected. So I'll just make that very wet that, saturate it, again let it soak in a little bit, make sure it's even. Okay, I'm going to do a test with the mixture now that has the ochre in it. As you can see it's very wet, it's spreading quite a lot, so that's probably a little bit too wet at the moment, so I'm just going to wait a little while. Okay, now it looks like the water's soaked in a bit now, so these darker bits aren't spreading as much. So I'm going to start putting them, them in again. As you see, I'm painting right into that gull there. And the masking fluid isn't letting any of the paint get through. The general movement of the wave seems to be this way, so I'm, I'm sticking to that. Really, I'm just making abstract shapes in the shadows of the wave, or the deeper forms of the wave. Again, it, it'll spread a little bit. I just let it do what it wants to, pretty much, at the moment. Top here, the tones look a little bit darker. Putting those in first. And there will also be a bit of translucency in this wave. So, what I have to do is leave some lighter areas as well, because they are the areas that will appear to be translucent. There's little sparkles happening at the bottom here. And just here, the wave is starting to break. So you can just see a lip forming coming down here. Few, just a little, few little downward areas to show that it's starting to cool over.
Okay, now from this wave, there are just little ripple effects coming off it as well, which I'm going to start to put in. just coming down and flattening out into this area here. Now I'll change to a bit of blue again I think down here so it marries up with the background. Production of the blue happening. Just strengthen some of these a little bit. I'm getting a few harder edges now as the paint's starting to dry, but that's okay because I think the painting needs a few little harder bits in it. Especially where the sparkles are. Just here, make it slightly deeper. We can also, uh, also always come back to the painting a bit when it's dry if we want to put a few harder edges in as well. So I'm just going to firm up a bit at the top of the wave as well. See how that looks, that's not looking too bad. Okay, now I think we'll dry that. It's always um, better to underdo a watercolour, I find, than to overdo a watercolour. So it's better to stop short rather than just keep going and going and going. And I'll just gently start to dry that again. I'm going to do, now, now that it's dry, I'm going to do a little bit of wet on dry just to firm up some of these darker bits. So it'll just give them slightly clearer edges and just add to add a bit of crispness to the wave so it's not all soft textures. So just here and there adding to what we've already got and a little bit of blue again. We won't go on this. Okay, at the bottom of this little ripple here, I'll put some darker of the greeny tone with the ochre in it. Just wet on dry, leaving gaps as well, just some rough edges. Again right through the gull. And we know we're going to get a nice clear edge on that gull when we take the mask and fluid off. Some little reflections here and there because this will be reflecting into the water below slightly. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do this 
the whole of this bottom section I'm going to wet starting at the bottom of that wave there so water right through up to that little wave there and then right across and we're just I'm just going to do a um, some more of the greys and the blues there's a bit of an underpainting on the foreground here because these will have reflections as well which will lie on on top of the underpainting again I'll just saturate this Okay, now I've wet the whole, this whole area here, I'm just letting it soak in a bit. As you can see, there's water that's collected on top of the, um, the masking fluid, where the gulls are masked. Now a good way of, of getting rid of that is if you just pinch the brush between your thumb and forefinger and get rid of any water in the brush, and then just run it over those bits, and that will suck up the water into the brush. And then you get rid of it again and then you suck up the water into the brush sometimes when you tilt the painting these little bits will run into what you've just painted and and wreck a nice clear sky or whatever you're trying to do okay now we're, we're still working on the, um, the greeny color with the ochre in it and again, I'm just going to start the same thing really here. Just putting little wavelets in. And then we'll get larger as I work down the painting. Okay, now I've got a bigger brush and I'm just going to put some greys and ripples and undulations into this foreground here with a larger brush. This is just an underpainting that I'm doing at the moment because there's a lot going to go on top of this. Again, I'm just trying to make my hand move in irregular shapes, trying not to make everything look too symmetrical. Just doing some swirly motions. And this is really the shallows here that the gulls are standing in. There's probably only a few millimetres of water here. As you can see, it's nicely spreading with the wet and wet effect. Okay, I'm just going to make it a little bit crisper down here. And of course, we can sh always sharpen it up when it's dry if we want to. Just run my brush along there. Quickly mix up a little bit more of the blue, bluey grey. A few more definite bits there. And coming off this wave here. So there, that should look quite nice and flowy and watery at the moment. That'll be enough for that application, I think. I'm going to come back when it's dry and just sharpen up a few little bits again. Okay, now again I'm just going to sharpen up 
some little bits here while it's dry. So this is wet on dry that I'm doing. Again, not worrying about the masking. Just going straight through. And over here. And then I'm just going to sharpen up on this ripple here, which is reasonably dominant one here. It's got lots of little sparkly bits on it. So I'm going to make it a little bit more obvious. Maybe a little bit darker in some places here. Okay, that should do that. Dry that bit again. Okay, now we've put in most of the underpainting for the waves and the water, but the surface of the water is quite a blue colour, a pale blue colour. So at the moment that's what I'm doing. I'm mixing up a, a nice pale blue. Again, I'll put a tiny bit of umber in so it's not a bright, bright blue. But we want it brighter than we've used so far. Something like that, perhaps a little bit stronger. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now I've made up a very pale wash of mainly blue and umber. I've made up a slightly deeper wash of the pale blue and umber, but with less water in it. And now I just want to mix up a little bit more of a yellowy greeny wash for the wave. So it was quite a bit of yellow in it, I think, this time. Yeah, that will probably do. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because the colour of water is mainly blue on the surface, the wave has that yellow ochery greeny feel to it. I'm going to go over the whole painting pretty much with these, these colours, changing to the ochery colour when I go through the wave. So I'll do a flat wash which means I won't wet the paper. I'm just going to paint it onto dry, dry paper and go methodically down the page, the paper like this until I reach here and then I'll start doing some, some watery shapes like uh, ripply shapes here in the foreground, some quite strong ripply shapes. And then I'll do the reflection on top of that. So I'm just going to tilt the board a little bit because it's a flat wash and we want it to run slightly downwards. And I'll get a large brush, fill it with that pale blue and I start at the top here. And you have to go very methodically with just a flat wash. And it has to be the same dry dryness or wetness as you go down so that you don't get watermarks. I don't want to disturb too much the work I've done underneath. So the fewer passovers that I do, the better. As you can see, the water does run downward slightly. Okay, now I'm going to change to 
a yellow ochre colour here as I go over the wave. It could maybe actually be a little bit stronger, but it'll be okay at the moment. down to about there and then I'm going to change to the blue again as I get to the flat water again just painting right through the gulls not worrying about them Put a little bit of deeper blue just here, I think. Just run it in while it's wet. Okay, come down a little bit further with this. That. Now I'm going to change brushes to a, a large pointier brush and I'm going to make these watery ripple shapes. I'm not following anything literally, I'm just kind of making up the shapes as I go. the whole bottom of the foreground with this. Okay, now I'm just running a little bit more of the green and ochre through this blue now. I've dried it and re wet it. Okay, just putting darker tones in amongst those ripples. So it's in keeping with the rest of the painting with the greens. Make my way all the way down. through the gull again okay now I'm just gonna I'm just going back into the wave a little bit now and I'm deepening it up slightly putting a little bit more detail in amongst it especially where the sparkles are because they need that con contrast of the deep against the very light to really sparkle so just wet on dry, it's not wet and wet, and I'm just doing little reflective shapes in amongst here. And I'll do that and just build up the wave so it's got a lot more detail in it. Okay, so I'm moving down more to the foreground now. And again, I'm just sharpening up a few little edges. Putting a few more little ripples in. And generally just adding to the complexity of the painting a little bit. Just going deeper and deeper. So I'll just work my way through this. Okay, now I'm just going to put a little bit more ochre over this wave. 
deepen the overall colour of it. And we should get a little bit of transparency happening in the lighter spots that I cover with the ochre, just like this bit here. By the time that's dried in, we should have a slightly translucent looking wave. By the time we've rubbed the masking fluid off near the end of the painting, we'll have a slightly translucent sparkling wave. So I'm just going to carry on to the end here with this. Maybe I'll just go a little bit bluer towards the end. I'll just spread that in a little bit more. Tiny bit of ochre here maybe. Okay, and we just dry that now. Okay, now I th I've sharpened up all the um, little wavelets now and deepened them so as tonal values I think they're dark enough now and the wave has started to get a little bit of intricacy happening with it. So I'll leave that there for the time being I think. Alright, now that I've um, put in the majority of the water, I'm going to uh, start doing reflections of the gulls first. Normally it's a good idea to put in the object that's being reflected before you put in the reflections. But in this case, because we've masked out the gulls, um, and I don't want to rub the masking fluid off yet, I'm going to do the reflections first. So I'll start by mixing up, again it's just a combination of the three colours which we've been using already. Um, the cobalt blue, the, the burnt umber and a bit of ochre. And I'm going to do two tonal values of that colour, one darker, one slightly lighter. Okay, I'm mixing the two value, uh, two tonal values of the screeny ochre colour again for the reflections because that's what they appear to be on the reference photo. They're quite dark reflections, um, and I'll put them in wet on dry on the paper. I'll put the lighter tone first, and then I'll just um, slowly kind of bleed in the the darker tone second. Okay, that should be about right now. Now I'll just start doing a reflection down from the gull's leg on both sides or legs. Then I'll change to the lighter tonal value. Start putting that in. Again, because it's a reflection, it's got a modified form, slightly ragged edges. going to quickly put that in. It's got a little ripply effect on the edge of them. You can see the ochre coming through in the colours. Okay, just still following the form of the shadow with the ochre green mixture, leaving a few little gaps in between that are distorted by the water movement. Right, 
now I'll put some darker tones in just to give it a bit more body. And then go right across. So reflections can be modified quite a lot. I mean you can have perfect reflections where the object is reflected just absolutely as it is or you can have oh, hundreds of different modifications in reflection so there isn't really one way to reflect anything. Okay, I think that'll do to start off with. Maybe a bit more different there. Okay, now I'm just going to put in this last reflection on the foreground goal. Again, still using the same tones, changing sometimes to a uh, the yellower colour to mix in with it, leaving some little gaps in between where the reflection of the sky is coming through. Okay, at some point I think here I'm going to add just a little bit of blue as well to it. Just put a tiny bit of blue in there. tie in with all the other colors we've used. Okay. Right, now that the reflections are basically in, um, it's time to rub some of the masking fluid off, I think, off the gulls and see what shape we're left with. Right, now if we've put the masking fluid on thickly enough, this should come off really easily and I should be able to just grab that little bit and pull it off like this and it just comes off in a big skin. There may be the odd bits you just have to rub off, but by and large, it should all just peel off like that. That makes it very, very easy. If you put it on thinly, you'll really have to rub away at it, sometimes using a towel to try and get rid of it all. But look at that, that's all just peeling off nicely. Leaving the gull shape underneath. And we can still see some of the pencil sketch work underneath as well as a guideline to go by when we when I paint the gulls. Okay, now I'm going to start painting the main gull in the foreground. I'll show you the reference that I'm going to be working off. If you can see that clearly. And we're going to use pretty much the same um, colours that I've used throughout the painting. There may be one exception, I may need to introduce a little bit of just cadmium yellow into it for the beak instead of um, yellow ochre. So that's probably going to be the only difference I think. So I'll start mixing the paints again. I can see we're going to need a bluey grey again. A bit of cobalt blue, a bit of umber. So we get a grey slightly on the blue side again. Now always check how thick or how viscous your paint is because that's very important if you're doing wet and wet as to how much it spreads. If it's very thin, it's going to spread a lot. If it's thicker, it's not going to spread so much and obviously it's going to be darker as well, be a darker tone. Okay, now I want for the black of the gull's back, I do want a very dark or a pretty dark tone. 
tone. So that should be all right, that tone there. And that's quite thick in terms of the um, viscousness of it. Whereas this is a little bit thinner, this one here. You can see it's, it's reasonably transparent. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, because the pencil lines are, um, are quite obvious, I'm just going to lighten them by rubbing away some of the lead. And that should lighten them enough for me still to be able to see them, but for them not to be too obvious in the final painting. Now the first bit I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the heat clear water because I want some nice soft edges and I'll do it, I'll, I'll paint the gull in sections as it were, I'll start with the head first so wet the whole of the head Again, put on too much water to start off with, let it soak in. If you put on too little water, you won't have as much working time. If the paper's saturated, you've got a longer working time. Really let it sink in. And I'll start, I'll just do a test again. See how much this works. Okay, so it's very wet at the moment. Probably too wet. So the best thing you can do when it's too wet is just to wait a little while, I think. If you don't wait, it will start all going everywhere. It's a little bit better now, it's still spreading, but going where I want it to. So down here what I'm doing, this bit of shadow here is called the core shadow and that's the bit where the, the darkness, I always say it's generally darker where the shadow meets the light which is here. It's going to be light here, it's going to be in shadow here. Where the shadow meets the light it's usually darker. So I always make that a little bit darker generally in paintings and you'll find that actually helps as well with giving whatever you're painting a more three-dimensional look. It gives substance to the, um, to the shape that you're painting. Okay, now I can see a bit of blue, just a purer blue down the bottom here which I'm going to put in as well. not so much grey. And I can also see a little bit of yellow. So I've mixed up an ochre with a tiny bit of crimson. And I'm just going to wash that in here as well. And this can be kind of part of the reflected light of the shadow as well. a bit more of this grey in. Right, now coming up from the eye as well. I can see shadow here. I can see a little bit of shadow here. Just under where the beak is, a little bit there, make it slightly stronger there. It might even come down slightly. Yeah. 
it's coming off the plumage there there's a slight shadow so I'm starting to give the plumage just a little bit of texture here and there Okay, we'll just wait a little while for it to dry a little bit more again. Before I carry on. Okay, it's dried a little bit more now. I can put a tiny bit more detail in here and there. Around the eye, the, the eye is usually in a little bit of a socket, so it's always got a bit of shadow around it generally. Just a slightly darker tone around where the eye is. And usually the eye is not, not like a round, it's usually a slightly geometric shape. I find. Just start it like that though. Just a little bit more shadow where the beak joins with the plumage there. Right here. Slightly deeper here. Okay, and I think that'll do for that bit so far. So I'll dry that gently. Okay, for the now for the beak, I'm going to put a little bit of um, cadmium yellow pale out because the beak isn't really. That ochre, it's, it's more a yellowy colour. So just have a bit of that. There's a little bit of crimson I've got here, and I've mixed it slightly with umber just to deepen it and brown it slightly. So I'll wet that carefully. Keeping inside the masked area again. Let's even out the water a bit. Just put that in generally. Okay, so I've wet the beak and I've got some cadmium yellow light which I've I've just dropped in there and that's just spread around that area nicely. Now I'm going to get some alizarin crimson which I've mixed slightly with the burnt umber and I'm just going to put a Kind of a rusty spot which I can see there into the um, yellow. And then I'm actually going to get a little bit of grey I can see there where the beak opens. It looks as if it's quite a grey colour. Pull that down. Maybe 
bit of a nostril there. I'm going to go slightly brighter with the crimson here. Again, we'll just have to do a little bit of waiting time. I think. Oops, a little bit deeper there. I mean, the light's coming down this way onto the gull, so the top of the beak will be a lot lighter than the bottom of the beak eventually. The beak's a little bit drier now, so I'm just going to put a little bit of grey and umber just around there where the beak opens. Perhaps the same where the nostril is here. Okay, now I'm going to dry that. Okay, now that's dry, I'm going to paint in some of the black feathers and plumage across here on the back of the gull and also underneath it's white plumage but it's in shadow and, and it's got quite a few little undulations in it. So I'm going to paint that in wet and wet as well. Try and try and do this whole section or up to there anyway in one go. So the first thing I'll do is wet it again because it's all got to be well, most of it's got to be soft to start off with. And I'll just wet down. Now there are little bits that are white which we have to paint around because we don't use white paint. There's one of the pieces there we need to paint around. I'll just wet the rest of it here. At the top here I'm going to go I'm going to let it bleed slightly into the white plumage there because it's a softer edge there. But round here I'm going to wet the whole thing. Again putting on a lot of water so it lasts a while. Down the leg slightly with the water so it just bleeds down there softly. Underneath here where the plumage is white we're going to put some greys in and some yellowy greys in. Just blot that little bit out because I've gone over it so I want to dry that area. I'm going to paint round that bit there. So I've left the space there now. It's all wet. Now I'm going to use a combination of the grey and burnt umber first. And I'm going to just start here. Of course, all wet and wet again. I'm going to bleed those colours up. onto the back of the gull. Remembering the lights coming from the top right hand side. So of course on the top here is going to be a lot lighter 
and when you get down here. So I'm just going to suggest some of those tones up here, leaving a bit of white in between first. And then the head is casting quite a strong shadow down here, so I'm going to put that in now. Right down to there. And that goes up back there. Okay, I'm going to lead some of this through again. A little bit darker here. And I'm going to go down this way as well. Introduce a tiny little bit of brown umber into it. grey and underneath here where it's wet on the white plumage I'm going to put that in. I might also make it just slightly bluer there where it changes to the white. So there's little bits of plumage up here, here, and coming round. So now I've mixed up a little bit of umber and grey. Because right underneath here it appears to go, sorry, ochre and grey, it appears to go slightly ochre-y. Where it's getting a little bit of reflected light again off the water, off the surface of the water. Any reflective surfaces will reflect light back up into shadow. That's what's happening here. Okay. I'm going to go back to the very dark again. Start putting that in. Joining it up with the slightly lighter tones. leaving little bits of white plumage here and there. Tiny little bit of grey here. Deepen that slightly there. Now 
the stack pretty much joins up with that one there. So I'm just keeping darkening, darkening, darkening slowly. Not just rushing it all in one go. Because if you've gone too dark too quickly, it's too late in most cases to try and um, rectify it. Go a bit darker here again. Okay, now I've, I've dried all the work I was doing with wet and wet with this dark plumage and now I'm just going over some bits of it wet and dry, wet on dry, just getting a few little sharper bits where I need them. So it looks just a little bit more crisp in places. There, and that should do so far for the for the dark plumage on that area. So now I'm going to go to this part of it and again miss out these white tail feathers which I've put a little bit of bluey grey on. So I'll leave them out. It's pretty much paint the rest in as dark. There's a little area there. Trim this out. And one here. A little spot there. And there's a spot right on the tip of the tail almost there. Just even it all out slightly. Right, the next thing to do is the legs. I'm just going to wet them again and join the bottom of them into the reflection and the top of them into the grey white plumage. So I'll just wet the whole thing. So it just blends into the bottom. Okay, now. All they are really is just a, a grey ochre colour in the shadow. So I'll just put that in. Seagulls have always got like little knees, which you have to show a little bit. And of course being under the body, they're mainly in shadow. So just make they make sure they join seamlessly into the reflection. Maybe we'll put a tiny bit of an ochre colour just there. That's all we need to do for them, we won't overplay them.
Okay, now I've put all the main features basically of the gull in. Uh, so now I have to think of the lights and the, the main shadow which goes over the gull. So as you can see, I've underpainted down here, I've underpainted the shadow a little bit going down there, but the shadow goes right round here as well. So I'm going to put on the main sort of cast shadow now, and that'll be blue, mainly with a tiny little bit of grey in it, but not much, a little bit of ochre again, and I'm just going to th throw it over the left hand side of the gull. Okay, I'll start with the ochre, which I'll put over that warmer bit first that we've already put in. Like so. And then I'm going to get our main blue atmospheric colour. And I'm going to go right over that bit of the head and neck where we've underpainted already. Okay, now you can see there's quite a hard edge up the top here, at the top of the head. So I'm going to get a little bit of clear water while it's still wet. I put it away from the water and just bring it slowly to the edge there and that will just soften that very hard edge. But you have to do it reasonably quickly before it dries or else it won't work. Okay, so you can see those edges are softened. In the same, just under the beak, just make that a little bit bluer around the eye. I'll just join that there. Okay, now this blue gets cast right down here as well. I'll let it bleed in to the shadow there and see this white marking because it's in shadow will now become blue. Same with that one. Okay, then we're going to get a slightly deeper blue and put it over this black this dark plumage at the bottom here where it's in shadow. You have to work quite fast doing this because things are drying all the time. Again, the top of it here is slightly hard, so I'm going to get some clear water while it's wet. I'm just going to run the clear water into the top of that so it softens out. Okay, I'm going to carry on down here more. Over that. And again, there's a white marking. I'm just going to go over that in blue. Keep on deepening here. There. Again we're coming up to bits where light is hitting the dark plumage. So I'm not going to go over those. I'll leave those out. Go slightly into them. And then again I'll just get a little bit of clear water while they're still wet. Just run it into the tops of them there. Okay, now I'll carry on over here because the shadow falls over the white plumage as well. And 
bring this blue down. slightly yellowy under there so I'm just going to reinforce that ochre there a bit there's a white tail feather here so I'm going to do most of it with blue Oops, a little bit on the end there a bit more ochre here Under here, there seems to be a little bit of white plumage left, just in a band there. So I'm leaving that out. And then I'm just going to head down the leg, like that. Putting the leg into a little bit of shadow as well. Okay, now back to here, get the blue again, blue goes over that white tail feather, and over most of this one, a little bit of that, over the black, Okay, and that's about it for the shadow on the gull. Maybe just the top here actually, where the beak is. Just make it slightly deeper there. Okay, and that's As you can see, I've now put um, some of the underpainting on the other two gulls and I'm ready now to put on the general atmospheric colour or general shadow colour which consists of course of the cobalt blue with a tiny bit of burnt umber and the yellow ochre like we've put here. This needs to be washed almost right across that bird and almost right across the spurt because they are mainly in shadow, just leaving a little bit of light on the top of their heads and their backs mainly. Okay, now I'm going to paint the, the shadow colour on. I'll start with this skull here. So we'll start at this end. And this blue mainly, cobalt blue, a little bit of burnt umber goes right over that. We'll start at the top here with these. And just put a layer over that dark, those dark feathers, that dark plumage first. And then bring it down right over it so it just faintly taints it with blue okay and now I'm going to go right over the gull's shoulder pretty much like that So this is all in shadow, so I'm putting shadow over all of it. It's probably about as simple as that. Again, we have to work fast 
I don't want anything to dry if I don't want it to dry. Right over there. Bring the blue down here a bit more. And then I'm going to change it into our ochre mixture as we start to get some reflected light from the water. Blue to there. Now I'll get the ochre mixture and I'll just flood the ochre mixture in here. So we get a slight warming of the gull or un of underneath the gull. And of course just carry it down the leg a little bit, down each leg. Now we'll get back to the top here where you can see there's quite a hard edge. And what I'm going to do is just bring some clear water to it here and there. And just soften bits and pieces of it. So it's not too clear cut and sharp. Okay, just make sure everything's blended nicely. Just bring a bit of shadow down over the beak there as well. And that should be about it for that one. I just dry that. It is now. Okay, now the same for the skull here. I'm going to start the shadow here. Just comes right down over the gull's head up here, over the grey underpainting I've done there. Just leave a few little bits and pieces for the plumage. around here a bit more over the darker bit I'll make that a little bit darker while I'm here just put a few little bits and pieces there back to the ochre and I think it lightens a little bit around the gull's face and eyes there. And then down here to under the gull. Just put a bit of blue there. That goes into the leg. There and then a tiny bit of yellow just here. And then if I go up the top again, up to where the lights meeting the shadow, a bit of clear water, just bring it into the edge there, and just soften that edge a little bit. Same with here, clear water away from the paint first and then bring it to the paint gently. And soften that edge a little bit too. There, yeah, and that's about it. So I just try it. Oh, hang on, over the beak. I forgot the beak. Now I'm almost ready to um, rub the masking fluid off but before I do I just want to make sure everything's in order underneath the masking fluid because once it's off 
and if things aren't right, we don't want to re, uh, re-mask everything again. So I'm just going to have a look at all the little ripples and things just quickly and just make sure I've got everything as I want it. So it's just a matter maybe of touching up here and there. Just making sure it's all there. Make sure the paper is very dry where the masking fluid is and I'm going to start rubbing it off. Now because this, the masking is masking just the pure white of the paper, it should appear very, very bright compared to the rest of the painting. And I'm just rubbing it off with my finger. Sometimes it gets a little bit tough and you might have to use a bit of a towel or a face cloth or some a dry face cloth to rub it off, but this seems okay. And you see how bright that white is compared to everything else. Okay, now I've rubbed all the masking fluid off and you'll notice how bright and sharp it all is. Now I'm going to do two things to help tie it in, to take away some of that sharpness and just tie it into the rest of the painting. The first thing I'm going to do is where the leading edge of the wave is. I've mixed up a little bit of ochre and umber and blue again. And the leading edge of the wave, I'm just going to go over some of it with this mixture. And that will just help tie in a little bit of the masking so it doesn't look quite so sharp and distinct compared to the rest of the painting. Okay, so I'll move right along where this wave is with this mixture. So that's the first thing, and now I'll show you what the other thing is I'm going to do as well. Blot up the water when you've finished. So just make sure you've got some tissue paper or blotting paper of some sort just to take up that excess water and paint when you've finished softening it, just like that. Okay, so do you see now they look a, a little bit more like sparkles, or probably a lot more like sparkles. And because it's watercolour it dissolves quite nicely. Just another little thing you can do that makes watercolour quite adaptable. I've pretty much done what I've wanted to do with this painting now. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you gained some tips from it and some information you didn't know. Um, and I hope to see you back to watch my next video, which hopefully will be out soon. Thanks very much.